Hello students, this is lesson one uh, for this week on function machines. Okay, so we're going to be looking today at uh, how to use function machines, how to work out outputs, and how to work out inputs. Okay, um, now when it comes to function machines, effectively what we're talking about is something going in, um, a, a function or an operation happening to it, and then you get an output. So what goes in is called the input, um, and what comes out is called the output. Okay. So for example, uh, if I put a number into uh, this function here, uh, multiply by 3 and then add 2, I'll get an output. So for instance, if I put 2 into this, first I'll times it by 3, which will give me um, 6, and then I'll add 2, which will give me an output of 8. Okay? So input would be 2, output would be 8 for this example. Okay? Now you can also write this algebraically. Okay? So I could write this as, um, as a bit of algebra. I could say if my input was x, okay, if x was my input, um, then my output would be y. Okay? Um, so have a look at this one. Um, there are two functions happening to this machine, uh, to this number, sorry. Input, if we call this x, output would be coming out here called y. Um, I'd like you to... Uh, Try and tell me, or just you know, think to yourself, what would come out if I put three into this? Um, hopefully, you're all sitting there or standing or whatever you're doing, saying the answer is 22. Yes, it's 22. Now, writing this algebraically, I could say if my input is x, first I times it by eight, so times eight, and then I take away two, and that gives me my output, which is y. So how can I write? x times 8 in a different way, algebraically. Hopefully you're thinking 8x. So when you write two things next to each other like this, that means 8 times by x. And then subtract 2. So ax take away 2 equals y is the answer uh, to the algebraic expression. And the answer in terms of the output was just 22. OK, again. Have a go, see if you can work out what the output's going to be, and also have a go at trying to represent this algebraically. So, 6 is my input, divide it by 3, that'll give you 2, times it by 7, that'll give you 14 is the output. So, output being y. So let's try and represent this algebraically. x divided by 3 and then times by 7. So, um, easiest way to represent this algebraically would be as a fraction. I'd probably write x over 3, and then you could write times by 7 like that, um, which would work reasonably well. Um, alternatively, uh, you could write this as um, 7x over 3, which would equal the same thing. Okay, so this would also be the same. Last one then for you to try. So I want you to work out what the input is this time. So this is uh, going backwards. And then again, try and represent this algebraically. So x and y. Although obviously in this case, we already know what the output is. You need to go backwards. Okay. Right, so going backwards is a slightly more complicated uh, thing. What you've got to do is undo what's happened. So if I do the opposite of, I'm going backwards from 50, right? So I'm starting at 50. If I'm going this way, oh, excuse me. If I'm going this way through the function, I need to first divide by 2 which will give you 25 and then continuing that way I'm gonna subtract 12 which will give you 13 so 13 is the answer to this question in terms of what is X now representing it algebraically uh, as inputs and outputs I would be writing uh, X add 12 and then times by 2 some of you, if you're in set uh, 3 or above, I'm hoping you'll know 
about how to expand this bracket out, giving you 2x plus 24. Okay, and that equals the output. Um, we've looked at inputs and outputs. Um, I've already explained this, so um, very simply, you're doing things one step at a time. 12 times 2, 24. 24 add 5, 29 would be your output for this one. Okay? Now, I'd like you to try these three questions, please. Have a go at those yourself. Pause the video. Press play when you want to see the answer. So there are all three of the answers there. Hopefully you got those right. How about going backwards? As I explained already, when you're going backwards, you have to do the opposite of what's going on. So think about what is happening at each stage and get your input. So if I put 72 backwards through this operation, instead of adding 12 at this stage, I'm going to subtract 12. Instead of timesing by 6 at this stage, I'm going to divide by 6. So let's try that. 72 take away 12 would give me 60. 60 divided by 6 would give me 10. So 10 is the input for this function. Okay? Remember, this is the output, so we went backwards this time to work out the input. Okay? Here's one for you to try. What is the input if the output for this function is 30? Pause the video, press play when you see the answer. So the answer should have been 8. Um, and the way you work that out is going backwards through the function. I'm going to subtract 6 first, then I'm going to divide by 3. Okay? So there are two things that you're undoing. So we start with 30, take away 6 and that gives us 24. Divide it by 3 and that gives us uh, 8, as it says there. Okay? So that is the input for this function. Try this one yourself again. The answer should have been 7 for this question. Well done if you got that right. Okay, here's the main activity for uh, today's lesson. What I'd like you to do is to answer all of these questions. Some of them are inputs, some of them are outputs. So for some of these, you need to go backwards. Um, please answer all the questions. Take a picture of your submission and uh, upload this to Class Charts to complete your uh, remote learning for today. Thank you.